Hi, this is Dave Bokey, and this is another Turbot video. Today, we're going to be looking at encrypting SNS and SQS, specifically for existing queues and topics that you might have that are working together. How do you encrypt those using automation? Taking a look at the Amazon documentation, we'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, if we take a look at that really quick, you can see that they provide an example of how to do this in the console. How would you click around in the console and do that? Which will work if you've got a handful of queues and topics, uh, but it will not really work well for large numbers um, of these things. So we're, um, we're gonna look at it from a different lens. We're gonna try and use some command line tools to do the work. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need to know are what are the command line commands that we have to do in order to set KMS encryption keys on these two resources. The first thing you'll notice, the two resources have similar values. One has a topic ARN that we need to supply, um, and the key ID of the KMS key that's associated with that topic. The SQS queue has a similar thing. We need the queue URL um, as the main value, and then we need a KMS key ID uh, along with some other metadata. Um, this is one of the issues with the CLI is that Different commands that were created at different times use slightly different standards for, for manipulating them. We're going to be using a new open source tool from Turbot to discover and gather the information that we need in order to fix these SQS and SNS queues. So first thing we need to do is install it. Uh, the first step in installing is to tap the Turbot slash tap, brew tap Turbot slash tap. That hits our cask, allows you to download and install Steampipe. The next command is brew install Steampipe. Pretty straightforward. I uh, had already downloaded this. It was the, so the zip file was cached uh, in my environment. Um, the download off the internet is, is pretty quick as well. It will go through the process and build the tool. Now all we have to do is we'll just do a simple version test to see what version we have and steampipe returns tells us that we have version 0.10 installed now let's take a look at the help just typing steampipe help we can see some great interactive getting started how do we how do we use this thing but really the best place to get started is the documentation on steampipe.io so you can go to steampipe.io there's doc there's docs uh there's uh, how to's, there's some blogs with uh, other examples of things that you can do. Um, but the main thing that we need here is plugins, right? So we're going to be working with AWS. So we're going to go to the hub, hub.steampipe.io. We're going to look for the AWS plugin, click that there, and then we'll copy. Um, you can see the documentation there for each of the plugins. We're going to copy the install command from the website and then switch back over to our terminal, paste that in. and Steampipe will get started installing the plugin. That was that easy to get the AWS plugin moving. Now let's jump into the Steampipe console. We'll use the command Steampipe query to get into the console. We'll then do a dot inspect that will show us that we have a single AWS plugin installed. We can then inspect that AWS plugin and see what tables are actually there. So here you can see all the tables installed. We're gonna be focusing on AWS KMS key um, AWS SNS topic subscription and AWS SQS queue. Um, we can look at any of those. In this case, we'll look at the KMS key table and we can now see the schema of that table. And I can quickly identify based on the information in the schema that what we need to look at in more depth is the ID, the key ID and the policy for these keys. So we can do a quick select ID policy from AWS KMS key. And here you can see the keys pretty straightforward but the policy itself is a large JSON blob. So we're gonna to have to do some work in order to drill in there and get the information out. We're looking for a KMS key that has an SNS privilege to it, has a service privilege for SNS. So first I'm turning on the multi-line multi querying capability uh, by doing that dot multi on, and then doing a select ID from policy. And now I'm using a special syntax for JSON B elements where I can actually pull out the statement key from within that blob. So now you see I have 
a smaller portion of JSON, but it's still it's still pretty large. Like it's it's now an array of objects that are in there. Um, so I need to do a little bit more work. This JSON uh, be array elements uh, function actually takes that that single line item for each column and it blows it out for every item in the array. It creates a different line. So here you can see I have the same key three different times with three different statements on the right hand side in the uh, in the policy column. Um, so now I've, I've basically blown out that table to show me the permutations of which keys have which policies. I can use that now. I can drill into that uh, JSON uh, object and I can get out of there the principal key and then the service key from my policy column. Here you see I'm using that same syntax. I'm drilling in getting the principal and the service principal and that's returning me exactly what I'm looking for, but a lot of the fields are null. If I want to get rid of the nulls, how would I do that? Can I just, could I just do something simple like adding a where clause to this? Unfortunately not. Um, that service principal field or even the, the array elements function cannot be used in the where clause because of the way the JSON object works. Um, so what I need to do is actually create a subquery in a from. So I'm going to use the same query. I'm just going to adjust a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to use the query as a subquery, uh, and you do that by putting um, some parentheses around it. So I'm going to start up here at the top, uh, indent it in a little bit. Uh, start at the top, do a select star, and then I'm going to select from. So I'm selecting all the fields from, and then I'm opening the parentheses. and then putting my original select statement inside of that. So I'm selecting everything from my query. So my query essentially returns a table and I just have to give that table a name. So I'm gonna call it service keys. And now I can do my where clause. Uh, so now I can look for where service principal is not null because I return some data, I return some text as service principal. The only thing I have to do is prefix that service principal with the name of the table, in this case, my my pseudo table that I created. So now I have an I have a sub I have a select query with a star, and I have a that selecting from a sub select query. So I'll copy this and we'll go back over to the terminal and just paste it in. Now you can see that it filtered out all of the rows that had null values in them, and so I'm left with five keys and one of which is using SNS. Now, if I had a lot more returned, I could actually do change that slightly differently. Instead of looking for not null, I could actually look for SNS. And in this case, now I have that key ID. So you remember back in our command, we needed a key ID for that command, and there it is. So I'll just copy that and save it off to the side. Now let's look at our queues. So the first thing I do in the queues is look at the queue URL column. Um, so you can see here, I've got six different queues, but one of the things I want to do is um, for this particular uh, use case, I only need to encrypt confidential and higher data. Um, so public data, I don't really need to encrypt. So what I can do is simply filter out any uh, queues that are tagged as having public data. So I'm left with five queues, three confidential and two PII queues that I need to deal with. Let's, uh, let's take a look over at my subscriptions and see what's going on there. So if I look at SNS topic subscriptions, I have 310. I don't need to deal with all 310. I really just need to deal with how many ever are connected to these five, uh, five queues. So let's join these two tables together. I can select the topic ARN from the SNS topic subscription table and the queue URL from the AWS SQS queue table and join them together in the where clause and add my filter for only looking for data classification equal to public. This returns me a combination data set of the two tables. So this has exactly the data that we needed uh, when we were looking earlier. I have the topic ARN for the SNS topics and I have the queue URL for the SQS queues. What if I wanted to use this data though programmatically? I could output it as CSV. I can use the dot output 
uh, command and change to CSV, run the exact same query and get the exact same output, but this time in CSV format instead of table format. I can do the same thing with JSON. So if my additional tooling that I'm going to link into wants to read JSON, I can change the output to .json, run the exact same query, and you can see that the output is exactly the same, but it's in a JSON format. But what I'd really love to do in this case is actually have the SQL query produce the AWS CLI command so I don't have to do any post-processing on it. So I'm going to take a look here at this query. This is using the concat function within Postgres that allows you to concatenate together strings. And so I'm concatenating together strings along with actual data that I'm querying using our query from earlier. This is going to produce in CSV format the actual text strings that could be run, copied and pasted, run on the command line for this. Uh, in this case, I think the best thing to do would be to pipe this uh, CSV output into a bash script and have it run these individual commands for me. I hope you enjoyed that and learning a little bit about SQS and SNS and how you can manipulate it with Steampunk. Have a great one.